Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to our next knowledge lesson, lesson seven, the history of the earth. Today, we are learning all about fossils. Let's get started. As always, words that we're going to listen for. The first word we're going to listen for as we listen to the story is fossil. A fossil is the preserved imprint or body of a plant or animal that died many years ago. An example of this is the scientist found a large fish fossil. Our next word we're going to listen for is impression. An impression is the shape of something left on a surface due to pressure. An example of this is their mother always knew when they jumped on the bed because of the impression their feet left on the mattress. Our next word to listen for is paleontologist. A paleontologist is a scientist who studies living things from long ago by looking at fossils. An example of this is, as a paleontologist, she was able to travel to many different places to study fossils. And our last word to listen for, preserved. Preserved means kept in good condition over a long period of time. An example of this, the preserved fruits and vegetables last through most of the winter. A couple things to know before we get to our story, boys and girls, is that Jerry the geologist studies non-living things. Today we're going to be introduced to Pam the paleontologist. Paleontologist studies living things. So Jerry the geologist studies non-living things that are related to the history of the earth, like rocks, minerals, volcanoes, and geysers, while Pam the paleontologist studies living things that were living on the earth many years ago, like plants and animals, those are living things. Fossils are preserved examples of those living things that provide clues to what life was like on earth during that period of time. Let's review the where are we chart. We should be getting really good at this. We all know that it starts with our solar system. The planet we live on in our solar system is Earth. Then we have our continent, North America. The country we live on is the United States of America. The state we live in is Pennsylvania. The city is Erie. And then there's you, the very important part of our neighborhoods, our cities, is you. You live on your street in your town, boys and girls. Now would be a perfect time to learn your address too. Ask your moms and dads or grandmas, what is your address? Write it down on a piece of paper. Now's a perfect time to learn it. Boys and girls, listen carefully to find out how paleontologists learn about plants and animals that lived on the earth many years ago. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Pam, and I am a paleontologist. Let's call her Pam the paleontologist. Jerry the geologist is a friend of mine. He called me this morning and asked me to come in and finish teaching you about the history of the earth. He is sorry he can't be here, but all this rock talk has him itching to see some neat rocks himself, so he is off hiking in the mountains. A paleontologist is a scientist who studies paleontology, which is the study of life that existed on Earth in the distant past. Can you say paleontologist? Paleontologists study bones to learn about life on Earth long ago. This isn't just any bone, it's a dinosaur bone. I'll be teaching you about dinosaurs in the near future. Jerry told me that you already know about basic geologic factors, heat, pressure, and time. You also know that sedimentary rocks, such as sandstone and limestone, are formed from layers of sediments that have been pressed together over time. Sediments can be tiny pieces of dirt and rock, or even decayed plants and animals. These layers of sediment offer many clues about the history of life on the earth. 
The history of life on Earth is my specialty as a paleontologist. Paleontologists need to know a lot about rocks and geology in order to study living things because of something called a fossil. A fossil is the preserved body or imprint of a plant or animal that lived thousands, millions, or even billions of years ago. If something is preserved, it is kept in good condition over a long period of time. Most fossils, like this fossil of a seashell, show you where the body of an animal or plant died and was buried under layer after layer of sediment. Over many, many years, with more and more sediment pressing down on it, this shell became part of a stone that formed as a result of geologic pressure. You are only seeing the impression or shape of it, not the actual shell. Think of the shapes you can make when you push an object into clay. When you remove the object, the shape still remains in the clay. The creature itself and its shell decayed and rotted away, but its shape stayed imprinted in the rock. As you dig down into the earth, the soil and rocks are divided into layers. These layers represent different geologic periods or times during which the crust and surface of the earth changed. For instance, if you find a layer of sandstone on dry land, then you know that there may have been an ocean or river over land at some point in the distant past. That means that by examining rocks in our area, scientists can tell if there used to be an ocean where our city is now and how long ago that was. We can estimate how old Certain fossils may be, thanks to our understanding of geology and rock layers. Fossils are usually found in layers of sedimentary rocks, though they can be found in other rock formations as well. It looks like the paleontologist in this picture has found a good place for fossil hunting. He has to dig very carefully to make sure he keeps the fossils in good condition. Every fossil is part of the Earth's fossil record. The fossil record includes everything we have learned about the history of life from studying fossils. The fossil record is what paleontologists study in order to figure out what life on Earth was like many years ago. Paleontologists can determine when the animals and plants imprinted in the fossils lived based on the rock layers in which they were found. They use information from all fossils to create a timeline of life on Earth. A timeline of life on Earth shows the order in which plants and animals existed from long ago to today. Today, I would like to show you several different fossils from different time periods during the history of the Earth. This is a fossil of a trilobite an animal that some scientists believe lived about 550 million years ago. Trilobites may look like insects, but they are more closely related to lobsters and crabs. Trilobites came in many varieties, from a half inch up to 28 inches in length. They had antennas, lots of legs, and a hard outer shell called an exoskeleton. That exoskeleton is important because it meant that dead trilobites were easily fossilized when they became buried in the sand. The fossil record estimates that the first plants appeared on land about the same time. Back then, there was no soil on the land because soil contains dead, decayed plants. Since these were the first plants on land, no plants had yet died in order to create soil. The first plants did not have the same characteristics as plants today. These plants were less than half an inch tall, and they had no roots, leaves, flowers, or seeds. But they were plants nevertheless. Soon came the age of fish. Many different types of fish ruled the waters. Also during this time, 
plant and animal life on land began to spread rapidly. The first soils developed on land, allowing new types of plants with leaves, stems, and roots to grow. With new plants came new land creatures, ready to eat those plants. Tetrapods, the first amphibians, made their way to, onto the beaches. An amphibian is an animal, such as a frog, that lives part of its life in the water and part on the land. Paleontologists have found many tetrapod fossils. An artist drew this picture using a tetrapod fossil, which shows what a real tetrapod might have looked like. Do you think any of this tetrapod's body parts look like they belong to a fish? Then, lush forests full of trees and plants such as ferns began to grow. As forests increased, so did the variety in sizes of animals. The first giant reptiles appeared. Of course, the one in this picture, called a dimetrodon, is just a model someone made, but they based this model on fossilized dimetrodon bones found in the earth. Paleontologists called the body part sticking up on its back a sail because it looked like the sail on a boat. Dimetrodon was not a dinosaur, but it certainly looked like one, and dinosaurs were soon to follow. We will learn more about dinosaurs next time. This is as far as the fossil record will take us today. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed hearing about fossils today. Come on back to our story next time and we'll learn some more. Have fun with the activity your teacher had planned for you today. See you next time.